Okay guys, it's been 15 minutes or so and I'm having a bit of a struggle but I'm going to explain to you why am I stuck. I always do this without the turbo. Turbo's out, put the engine in, less issues because of one thing, because of the turbo basically. But uh, I mean this thing would be in by now. But because of the turbo I decided to try it again, okay, because it's a WRX, usually I do STIs. Well, it kind of is an STI, but it's not. Well, the engine bay, I guess. Anyways, I'll show you what's going on. I'll, sh I'll show you where the struggle is, and I'll show you how you can avoid it. And I just realized, by the way, uh, if your axles are out, okay, you can remove this stud. That, you know, Remember the two studs that stick out the, from the back of the block that go through the transmission and bell housing so you can take one out on the turbo on the turbo side and that's gonna basically and shoot and your struggle and that's what i'm gonna I'm, gonna I'm gonna have to pull this out and i'm gonna have to remove that stud but let me show you exactly what's going on by the way this is why you want to raise the transmission as high as it can go so the engine mounts where is this engine Let's see can clear both sides will clear this front cross member okay and there is the other so although the transmission is literally touching the the tunnel you only have a quarter of an inch space between the you know the, the stick the stick and down studs and uh, what did I just say cross member yeah engine cradle so you can see that the driver's side bottom stud that's in right it's already through so is the other okay let's look at the other one okay so you can see you can see it is i think you can see it it is through the problem here is this guy here the ear of the turbo the mount not the stud the, the actual casing of the hot side here is scraping on the transmission housing because that stud is holding it I didn't notice that right away and I couldn't lift usually what I do is because again this this thing you know tilts back and forth but not side to side so you know I mean you rarely can grab it perfectly where the engine's level so mine was tilted to the left a little and that bottom stud on the passenger side wasn't hitting its hole Okay, and then this ear was underneath the transmission casing, the bell housing, okay? So I didn't see that. And usually what I do is, if the turbo wasn't here, I would just lift, I would aim for that, or either or, you know, aim for that stud, and then just lift the other, keep the engine uh, a bit lower, and just lift the other side that's low, or, you know, tilt it down. And just aim for the stud and then you're done so i'm going to, have to pull this out again not fully just so i can remove that stud i don't want to be removing the turbo and i'm going to remove that stud because it's going to be very easy to put it back in because the axles are not installed obviously so it's going to be just right there on the very bottom so once it's out i'm going to show and go through this it's easy once the engine is pulled out i'm just going to put 214 nuts and the stud together, use two wrenches and just undo that stud. I'm gonna do that same procedure to install it. Okay? Okay. things happened I did not remove that stud that I was talking about on the passenger side what I've done instead was I went for lunch had some chicken soup 
good chicken soup. Then I came back and uh, gave it you know, one last push and uh, it went in without removing any studs. So uh, you got two options, either remove this, uh, the, the stud or have some chicken soup, okay? So once it was in, I mean, it's got to be tightened, obviously. I have the one nut on one side and two bolts here, one up here and then one down there. So, you know, we have space between the bolts. Once I had this much space, could not push it in anymore. It's probably next to impossible for you on your own or even with a buddy to push the engine in. So what you want to do, you want, you know, you want to be lined up, obviously, you know, block to the trans and then you want to put in bolts, whatever, whichever one reaches at this. I mean, if you're even, all of them should reach and uh, slightly tighten them going, going around, you know, back and forth. Like I said, it's got to be, don't be tightening the two on top here. Okay, just do one on the bottom and then one on top should be enough. And uh, went in. Then, hopefully you saw it. Uh, once this was in, I just pushed the fork, and I felt, and I actually also heard. I should have recorded that. I heard the throttle bearing pop in the pressure plates. Right. So now it doesn't want to come back. Remember, before it was straight. Now it's an angle, that means that it, that's, it is, it's in. So I, I won't be able to push it out. Okay, it's gonna be impossible now. You can kinda hear it slide on, its, on, the, on the lock, locking mechanism, whatever you wanna call that. Uh, so that's tight, so yeah. Still gonna have to bleed the clutch. Because, oh yeah, the, the, the slave cylinder is also different, okay? came with the transmission. All right, so now I'm gonna spend another 12 hours on looking for the rest of the bolts. And uh, I'm gonna tighten that up. Curls are, are in. I did those when the engine was still hanging on the hoist. This one actually installed nice and straight. Sometimes, for some reason, they're angled ever so slightly, like by a eighth of an inch or so. This one is pretty straight. Mine is a little slightly off for some reason, 06 STI. But this one, this one seems pretty, pretty straight. Man, this would suck to do that coil. Now, if I would forget, oh man, this much room between the coil and the frame. This side is slightly better. But, you know, all you gotta do is remove the two nuts on the bottom from the engine mounts, raise the engine slightly by the oil pan, you know, through a block of wood, whatever, and you're golden. You know, just, you, you wanna raise it above the frame as high as possible and you can do spark plugs. Who said doing spark plugs on a Subaru is difficult? Just all you gotta do is raise the engine. Guys, got updates. The main one is that I'm, I'm done. It's Sunday, actually, I should be home watching TV. All right, so quickly, the, the cylinder four cooling mod. You can see the connection right here, the T-connector. So you wanna hook up to the black line. Okay, this line here. This is your in, or we're talking about the heater hoses, okay? So this goes in from the engine into the heater core you know, through the firewall, and then comes back through this hole. So you want to tap into this guy here. So that would be the top one coming from the tire, uh, tire wall, firewall. A little T, remember the, the T this way, okay? So, you know, you know, the letter T, okay? So the T this way, so the flow goes up and then turns right in this case and goes back into the water pump, okay? So the hot coolant will exit faster from cylinder number four, the prob problematic cylinder number four. Uh, then we got the starter, which is in, had to find two bolts, shorten one, you know. These things take time, just little, you know, everything stuff is different now, okay? There are a little bypass, coolant bypass. These two go into the throttle body to warm it up faster. 
and we don't want that on a trek or autocross okay i mean it's nice for the engine to warm up faster but once it's warmed up you know hot coolant still passes through the throttle body and you don't want that okay you want you know as cool air as possible uh going into the engine so that's that that's just going to loop around uh here like, like little things okay like this this boot on the starter wire the one that i had on the car was ripped but luckily the one that came with the starter was solid so i had to switch that which worked out bottom bolts for the motor mounts are tight axles are in okay that was easy oh yeah i did replace some of these clamps Guys, if you have a chance, get rid of these, okay? These are, don't reuse them. Use them once, when they look good. Once they're not looking too pretty, this, these are garbage. These are from the different snipping actions, okay? I did snip, shorten this, so it would stay away from the steering shaft. So now I have probably about two fingers of worth of space between the this, you know, the, the extra hose from the cylinder for cooling mod uh, and the steering shaft. So that's that's fine. Even if I press on it, it's not going to go because it's attached to this AC line with two zip ties. Two zip ties. That's two zip ties. So this area here, this is all connected. This is done. This back area is all done and underneath. So this coolant line goes into that little reservoir tank here, and up on top. And this is part of your P P PCV system. And these two, I believe these are the 5 8 connections, these are going to go right here into the bigger line, bigger nipple on the valve cover, valve covers on both sides and this is just to equalize the system you can see the crank is already, cr the crankcase is already connected and it just needs another connection so that's easy and then there's going to be a another kind of like a t connector here and that's going to go into the oil separator can which is going to be right over here but you know that's later just just letting you know guys if you're going to be interested you know what to watch out next i'm going to try and keep these these videos short as possible like i no, i'm not gonna go through it detail by detail like i did on, the, on my 06 sti because then it would be wait we don't want 20 or 30 40 episodes of this no no all right guys that's it for this one if you're interested subscribe comment you know like dislike but you know like and I'll see you soon.